Hi, I'm Katie. Uh, I'll be talking about WebSockets and some differences between WebSockets and the REST HTTP. But before I do, I will talk a little bit about browser server communications, communication using the HTTP protocol. So the web has been largely built around the so-called request response paradigm of HTTP. And normally when a browser visits a traditional web page, each resource such as, sorry, resource, ima image, CSS, JavaScript, that the browser comes across when rendering the document uh, creates a new request to the server that hosts the page using the HTTP protocol. The web server acknowledges the requests and sends back the response. In many cases, for example, for news reports, sickle cells, or a chat application, the response could be stale by the time that the browser renders the page. So if you want to get the most uh, up-to-date real-time information, you can refresh the page manually, but that's not the best solution. So to overcome this deficiency, uh, currently there are three basic options that developers use for browser server communication. It's polling, long polling, and streaming. So with polling, uh, your client code sends the HTTP request to the server at regular intervals and immediately receives the response. Some of the server's responses might be empty if the requested data is not yet ready. So for example, if you are checking scores of a game and send a request to see the update results, you won't receive any data back unless the scores had actually been updated. So uh, polling is a good solution if the exact interval of message delivery is known because you can synchronize the client request to occur only when information is, is available on the server. However, real-time time data is unpredictable and the browser might be making unnecessary requests. With long polling, um, it, it is a variation of polling designed to accommodate for scenarios where the server does not have new data available. When, um, so you make an uh, HTTP request to the server and the server keeps the request open for a set period. Instead of uh, sending an empty response back, the server waits until the information for the client becomes available. If the requested information is not available within a specified time interval, the server sends an empty response to the client, closes and reestablishes the connection. This is a pull request function. It uses a set timeout and the interval is set at 30 seconds. Uh, and it makes an AJAX request to the server and is continuously polling the server for the data. And then we have uh, streaming. So in streaming, a uh, client sends a request for the data. The server sends and maintains an open response that is continuously updated and kept open indefinitely. As soon as the server gets the data ready, it starts streaming and adding more and more data to the response object without closing the connection. So for example, requesting a video from YouTube results in streaming data without closing the HTTP connection. So ultimately, all of these methods for providing real-time data involve empty or multiple responses containing duplicate data and cause a huge amount of overhead, introduce latency, and this is obviously going to have an impact on performance. Uh, so that's when we use WebSockets. So the goal of WebSockets uh, is to provide a mechanism for web applications that need two-way communication with servers. Uh, the overhead is minimal, and instead of hundreds of bytes in request and response headers, the server sends responses only when the data has been exchanged. So how, what are the differences between HTTP and WebSockets? WebSocket is a bi-directional protocol. Uh, um, so HTTP is a unidirectional protocol, which, mean, and which means that uh, the request is always initiated by client. Server, server processes the uh, request and returns a response, and then the client consumes it. WebSocket is a bi-directional protocol where there are no predefined message patterns, such as request response, so either a client or server can send a message to the other party. HTTP is full duplex, and uh, WebSocket is a full duplex, and HTTP is half duplex, which means that um, uh, HTTP allows the request message to go from client to server, and then server sends uh, a response uh, message to the client at a given time, either client is talking to the server or the server is talking to a client. With WebSockets, either client or the server can be talking to each other at the same time and be independent of each other. Uh, WebSocket uses, WebSockets use single TCP connection as opposed to HTTP. So typically a new TCP connection is initiated for an HTTP request and terminated after the response is received a new TCP connection need to be established when another HTTP request responds. 
For WebSocket, the HTTP connection is upgraded using standard HTTP upgrade mechanism, and client and server communicate over the same TCP connection for the lifecycle of WebSocket connection. So this is how the uh, upgrade looks like. This is the request and the response, and WebSockets are upgraded from HTTP protocol to WebSocket protocol. WebSocket uh, defines new protocols for WS and WSS for standard and secure WebSocket connections. Uh, this is the, you set the event handlers on open, on message, on close uh, to check if the connection was open or closed and for receiving messages. To use WebSockets, back-end applications must use WebSockets, so libraries exist for many languages, including Node, Ruby, Python, PHP, etc. Uh, if the client's browser does not support WebSocket negatively, you need to make sure that your code falls back to the legacy HTTP. Manual writing code to support all possible browsers and versions requires lots of time, especially for testing and maintaining the code for different platforms. Uh, a Node.js library that has become very popular in this domain, Socket.io, which comes with a client and server implementation of the protocol. It abstracts WebSocket communication and includes fallbacks. So this is an, a chat, uh, example of a chat application using Socket.io. This is the server side. So you make a, a server, but then you pass uh, HTTP to the Socket.io, and then you set your uh, listeners on uh, you for connection, disconnect, and for receiving messages. This is a client side. You call an IO function that connects to the uh, server automatically, the, the server that hosts the page by default. And you also set uh, event handlers to receive and send chat messages here. Uh, WebSocket is not an sorry, a WebSocket is not an HTTP replacement, so there are different scenarios where you would use HTTP or WebSockets. So for HTTP, uh, you use HTTP to receive resources uh, that don't require or need ongoing updates for, let's say, if you are a fan of a sport and you want to check the game that, uh, that is not in progress, that happened last week, you would use HTTP. Uh, you, was, you would use HTTP for highly cacheable resources, and HTTP are better suited for error scenarios. And webs for WebSockets, you would use them if you have you need fast reaction time for chat application, maybe, or ongoing updates, and high frequency messaging with small playloads. So these are the resources that I used, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs>